some reception in our house. Yeah, we don't have reception in our like, house. We what the fuck? Welcome to Melon's Fruit Bowl with your stars, Melon. And Liz is also here, and I'm the Lord. I'm here too. So, what are we talking about tonight? Well, there is a whole list. There is a whole list. So, let's just go right down the list then. I believe you wanted to start with bitches who can't drive. Oh, man. Bitches who can't drive. Tell us all about the bitches who can't drive. Now, when you say bitches, are you referring to just all people who are bitches, or are you referring to, like, females specifically? Absolutely not. Bitches is not a... Bitches as a derogatory is not a gendered term. Actually, technically, given the fact that the term originally referred to a female dog, it actually is normally gender-specific. No. Not... Not, not in Melon's, her book. Not a melon's fruit bowl. That's no. why I asked for a specific definition. Because when it comes to your fruit bowl, we want to know what we're eating. Everybody. Everybody's so, bitches. What has set you off about these bitches who can't drive most recently? What What was the actual event of fail to drive that you were angry about at the moment? Well. Just on the way here. Alone. Voyage here. The voyage. The voyage. We drive a tiny car. It's glorified roller skate. All right. It's buffeted around in the wind a bit. I like that term, though, glorified roller skate. Glorified roller skate. Five I think I'm going to start referring to all small cars that way. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yes, you drive a glorified roller skate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic vehicle. And yeah. I say that because I drive a silly, unnecessary vehicle, or SUV for short. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so people in silly, unnecessary vehicles, it is raining a touch here. Just a touch. You just may hear that in the background of this live performance. All of our phones freaking out about the flood warning that's on. Yeah, there may be a brief interruption for another flood warning because we're actually going straight off the phone live to you people tonight. Damn! Too bad nobody's listening. Mm-hmm. We'll work up to that part. <laughs> well, driving along, doing the speed limit or better, 10 better usually because I'm me. Uh huh. Bitches tailgating me. Like, all but touching my bumper with their giant, stupid, unnecessary vehicles. Mm hmm. And when I brake check them, because I'm from the great state of Illinois where you break check people and they piss you off. I thought you shoot people when they piss you off. I don't, I don't carry. Because I'd probably be too tempted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're a cowgirl. I imagine you have the aim for it. You have a little six shooter. I have terrible aim. She does. Terrible aim. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a topic for another day. My <laughs> aim and how bad it is. But anyway. Maybe, maybe Mel can have it right now. I don't know. But no. anyway, we're, you, well, so we're, we're on the subject, though. This is tailgating me. Break check them. Right, so I break check them. They don't back off. So then I just slow down. I'm like a proper old person. I'm like, you should pass me. But then they're too fucking chicken shit to pass me because the wind's going 45 miles an hour, mm-hmm. buffeting their stupid, unnecessary vehicle around. And then we're all in this conundrum together. And I'm being blinded because my glorified roller skate is shorter than their stupid, unnecessary vehicle. And generally, yeah. they, yes, they, their headlights tend to be right at mm-hmm. our, our lovely mirror level. And even with turning the mirror up, you still get blighted. Yeah. Because then you've got, then you've you got get your side, side mirrors. mirrors. And if you wear glasses, it just goes straight into your eyes. Yes, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have that problem, too. Bitches who can't drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we almost... There's, there's one intersection that we frequently go through where there are... Two left-hand turn lanes and a single forward lane. Uh, and there have been multiple occasions where both of us, while driving, have tried to go forward because we are in the forward driving lane. <laughs> and the person in the middle of the lanes, but only supposed to be turning left, decides that they made the mistake and they want to go forward. They also go gaily forward. And there's not enough room. And both of us have had to use the horn very effectively. We're very horny mm-hmm. in our glorified roller I skate. really am. Yes. But I did the other day. I was so mad. I took a picture of it. <laughs> the left turn lane is closed off, and they're in the straight lane, and the car in front of me and the car behind me both turn left into the oncoming traffic. So it's nice nice job. I was honking at them. The Bitches who can't drive. Yeah. 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 So I ride a motorcycle most days. And my motorcycle's horn is broken. Because you got too horny. Basically. But I was also 30 years old sitting in a garage for 30 years. 30 years, yep. Uh, But so I frequently just sit there like an idiot and stab the horn button because... Stab it with what? My thumb. Okay. 
It yeah. makes her feel good. Just, makes just, me feel just, good. just yeah, jam her thumb in there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Repeatedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Firmly. Uh huh. Yeah. That's Forced. how you do it. That's how I do it. Uh huh. So, Preferably with a little turn in there too, a little yeah. twist. Yeah, a little twist. A little wiggle. It helps. Yeah, it's not on the throttle side, so it doesn't make the bike. And then faster, you whip. Good. And then you nay nay. <laughs> Some days. I know. Well, it's not so anyway. Secret. Yeah, so that's bitches who can't drive. Mel, any, any other commentary on bitches who can't drive? Oh, I just. This this rain reminds me of when we were in Arizona, and the people oh, in Arizona man. treat rain like the entire world is coming to an end. <laughs> just because it's Arizona, they don't see rain. Right. It's like when I was living in Oregon, and there was an inch of snow. Shut the state down. Yeah. And everyone's looking at me like, wait, you're from like the East Coast and Wisconsin and all that shit. This is nothing to you. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. I'm, I'm right up there with Bill Engvall. I can still find my golf ball in this shit. What are you whining about? Right. No, shut the state down because, oh my God, they can't drop an inch of snow. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's an inch of snow. Yeah. They wouldn't even consider canceling school in any of the places I've lived nope. prior to this. You guys shut the state down. Is it Oregon? Yeah. 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 There's north enough to not, you know, all have summer tires, so it's not like they couldn't drive in the snow. Well, that's the thing. It's like Oregon, the huge, huge thing in Oregon that you have to be very, very concerned about because there's so much rain and occasionally freezing temperatures is black ice. Mm. It's not like they don't know how to drive on slippery ass roads, but they couldn't handle snow because, oh my God, it made everything Caucasian. And the second everything is Caucasian, no one can drive. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like with the rain, it's got to do with white privilege. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. With the rain, like we saw people going off the road with mm-hmm. rain because you get that you know first couple minutes of rain and the oil slick mix and you hydroplane. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, this well, what is I always not- think is funny is that like when I over the winters here, you listen to the radio and they're like. Oh, I can't believe all these people in their little four bangers. Don't they know we're in the Midwest and you got to have a four wheel drive? You just, it's part of the thing of living in the Midwest. And I'm like, it occurs to me that every time I see a car in the ditch, <laughs> it's, four wheel drive. it's one of the four wheel drive jobbies. Mm-hmm. And every time I see a car pass me in the snow, it's, it's a, a four banger. It's a glorified roller skate. <laughs> it's one of the glorified roller skates. Mm-hmm. And it's because the people in the glorified roller skates understand that there is snow and ice. And they're actually driving carefully. It's the people who are like, I have a large four-wheel drive vehicle. I can drive however I want to. Snow, ice, doesn't matter. Ha, ha, ha. Why is the world upside down? Because you're in a ditch. It's true. Because yeah. you thought you could drive however you wanted. And it's like, I, literally, I'll drive to work on a really messed up day. Six vehicles in the ditch. All of them large four-wheel drive. Silly, unnecessary vehicles. Several other cars on the road with me. All four bangers. Mm-hmm. Just Might going, putter, 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 putter. Mm-hmm. It might take you two hours to get there, but you'll get there. It mm-hmm. takes you longer because you're actually not driving stupid, but mm-hmm. you get there. Right. Driving like little old ladies. Speaking of which, anything you wanted to add, Liz, to the whole subject of bitches who can't drive? No, I'm good. Other than what you already have. I'm good. Sweet. <laughs> well, then let, why don't we bounce to the next topic of discussion? We're doing Can- this in order. It's a really random. Well, I, I know. That's oh. the wonderful thing, is at one hand, on one hand, it's completely, ridiculously random. On the other hand, it's actually still in order. Because <laughs> we make no sense. It's the what? sense of no sense. It is the most zen thing in the world. So next up, chaos. kink drawing in queers. Okay, Oof. okay Oof. you barked. You go first. <laughs> it's hardly a bark. So, you went wolf. I've that been... counts. Yeah. Okay. First, I'm great. So one of the things Go ahead. that uh, seems to come up frequently are erections. Those and why people who you, have them love them. What's that? that what, sorry, what? I said people who have them love them. I also love them. I, I mean, everybody loves them. Erections or queers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's just go with or, queer erections and split the difference. Fantastic. <laughs> Story. I don't want to split that. Um, but it does come up frequently, it seems. <laughs> We're going to work on being serious today, I swear to God. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So anyway, the subject of kink drawing in queers, your yes. issue with it, sir. Well, in a number of discussion groups, it's always like, 
you know, we, we seem to we seem to always see the same people and we don't seem to have enough diversity in our community being the King community and I frequently just sit there in awe and go, Do you not do you not actually notice the people that are here? Do you not pay attention to anyone that yeah. shows up to these different events? Because which I don't get. I mean, like, uh, to me, every time I go to an event, it's it's extremely diverse. I mean, you have transgenders, you have transsexuals, you have homosexuals, you have bisexuals, you have the really rare, weird little bastards in the corner, like myself, who are heterosexual. Um, but otherwise, you know, we have such a ridiculous diversity of race, gender, and sexuality. And age. That, you know, it's uh, like, there are some cases where, like, I get it. Someone hanging out with you that has just met you wouldn't know that you're trans right. and you're not the only one there's a few where people would just be like you're what yeah trans maybe you don't know whatever but there are enough there it's like yeah you know you can't the, the only problem there is not so much whether or not they're present it's whether or not they're either identified or marginalized which i don't see any reason why we need to identify everyone right and yeah. marginalization is something i've been rallying against pretty much since I came into the community because I'm like, no, we got too many really awesome transsexual and transgendered people rolling around who pretty much get solidly marginalized by other people, um, which we've gone off about before. Well, I've gone off about before because I'm me uh, because I, I just pretty much think it's just people having a sexual issue with it. They're just not sure if they should be turned on or not, so they sort of push them off to the side. Which sucks, because they're such awesome people, and a lot of the community is losing out on being able to deal with and interact with really awesome people, because it's confusing their sexuality. Yeah. But, I mean, even, even in the kink community, thing, things like being bisexual get completely overlooked. Like, it's not even an option. You know, despite the fact that people will put on profiles that they're heteroflexible and things like that, it's like... We have so many options, but then to say that some of them aren't really options to you and just pretend that they don't exist, you know, it makes that hard for people who maybe identify as that. Like, you know, we we both identify as bisexual, but, you know, we are seen as a heterosexual couple, and so that just sort of negates that whole bisexuality because... I prefer queer as fuck. Right, queer as fuck is 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 perfectly acceptable too. Thanks. So you know, but do you use queer as fuck? Because if you tell somebody you're bisexual, they look at you like you came from another planet. Like it. Like I don't know the queer as fuck is any better accepted. No, really, it's especially in the community. I find that most people, especially dealing with me, are more surprised that I am just heterosexual, not heteroflexible or bisexual. They pretty much expect it everybody is right you're, you're pretty much like you sort of smile nod and go with it when someone assumes you're not because it is more the sexual norm is you know that as they said in um better than chocolate my favorite line no you're omnisexual you're like that tornado in the wizard of oz sweeping up everything in your path and that's sort of what everyone expects everyone else to be like and it's like no some of us really are just gay or heterosexual we don't really blur that line because we don't need to we're happy with what we got. But I also think going, you know, going back to why there aren't as many queers or perceived as many queers is, I mean, you go to certain events and the porn is straight. The the play is, you see a lot of play that is very, you know, male and female oriented. And so I know some of the queer people, they go there and they don't feel comfortable, despite the fact that, it, I mean, that's their own personal perception. But as a community, we also don't do a really good job of, like, finding out why they don't come back. Mm-hmm. You know, like, the, the, the queers that, that have come once or twice, you know, maybe they're a little more introverted or, you know, maybe they just felt like certain play was too intense. But if we don't find out why they're not coming back, then that also leads to the, the lack of queer presence in, in the community. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I think there's a, I think there is a decent balance of, of representation of all types of people, ages, and play styles. It's just, you know, if there are people in the community that don't feel that there is enough queer presence, then, you know, 
I guess they have to start talking to the queers that are there and find out, you know, why people choose not to come after, you know, one or two events, mm -hmm. you know, because well, so. if, it's some, if it's something as simple as their perception, because all of the porn is heterosexual porn, maybe that's enough for them because maybe they don't feel like anyone's playing queer porn, that queers aren't accepted there. Mm -hmm. You know, little things like that or just, you know, the way people... I mean, we all have our little groups and stuff, but, you know, some people really stick to their tight-knit groups and, you know, are intimidated just by the that sort of cliquish feel when, you know, when they're at larger events. Mm -hmm. having, having been the token queer in several discussions of why queer folks are not more heavily represented, especially at sort of large public events. Uh, I have made the point many times, and we'll make it again, if you are openly queer and find yourself constantly called upon to create space and to maintain, to maintain your space as well as your own safety because you're, other, because you're identified by a larger group as when when we say hey we need to we need to be more welcoming to the queers and by doing that we single out folks that we identify as queer because of outward presentation not because we've actually talked to you and heaven say, help hey, us all heaven help us all using our words that's kind of fun but coming into a space where you're asked where you are asked to let your guard down when you live with your guard up is really, really challenging. And when the expectation is, well, we're all safe here, even though our tendency is to other you because you're different. We're, we're so excited you're here, but we want to talk really awkwardly about how it's great that you both are female-bodied or you're both male-bodied or somewhere in between and, and that's really awesome and really cool because we're super accepting but you know it's it's unclear what your dynamic is and we're really desperate to define your dynamic as soon as you walk through the door in many cases you know we don't you don't give folks a chance to define a space as safe because because we say this space is safe and so Maybe it is, but I think we often don't let people take the time, especially folks who are new to the community, take the time to say, yes, this is a safe space for me. However, however I define a safe space for myself. It's just assume that because of the lifestyle that everyone's going to be open, accepting, and creating a safe space for you, despite the fact that they want to pigeonhole you into a box so that mm -hmm. they know exactly where you stand. Yep. That's sort of... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a much more concise way of my long-winded way of saying what I just said. No, but I, I mean, that help, you know, that might help people understand, too. And I think... But that's the thing, like, everyone, everyone expects you to have a title, a, a, a label, or something, you know, are you a top, are you a bottom, are you a switch, are you a dom, are you a dame, are you, you know, are you sadistic, are you masochistic... You know, what is what is your jive? Are you straight? Are you heteroflexible? Are you pansexual? Like, everybody has to have a label, and everyone expects that... It's not just a label, it's a definition. Right. Like, you, like everyone should be walking around with a big old name badge that says, Hi, my name is, and I list all the things that you label yourself as so that people just know where you fit in the community. It's like, there are people who... You know, one day they might feel like they're a dom, and the next day they might feel like a bottom. And you know, like we have to allow that. that we have a term for that. It's called switch. Right. But you know, even that sometimes seems to throw people off. Like, oh, you just can't make up your mind. Really, I think an easier definition would be new or experienced. Because an experienced person has a better understanding of who they are and what they want and a better way of communicating if that changes. Yeah. Because we've had a number of people who've been in the lifestyle for a long time and have made 
drastic changes to themselves because they realized who they really were after a certain period of time. Uh, whereas we cannot expect a new person walking through the door to be able to answer that list of questions. Like, are you top, bottom, sadistic, masochistic? Do you identify as cisgender, transgendered? Yeah. You know, a lot of people may not have the answers to those questions, and we have to be willing to say that it's perfectly okay to not have the answer to that question. And not to expect people to... Is. And not get uppity at people when they're like, well, I can't really define whether I'm a top or a bottom. Well, how dare you? Well, maybe they're new. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing. Is you, you have to give that space for new people. Uh, whereas an experienced person understands the concepts better and can better explain who they are and what they're into. Just to throw in my two cents so everyone knows I, I'm here and I don't just keep letting the dog out. <laughs> the dog really needs to go outside in the rain mm -hmm. for seven seconds. Yeah, no, I think it's just like she gets the idea she wants to go outside and then she gets the, into the rain and she's like, on second thought, no, I don't want to be out here. I just wanted to play. It's so. terrible. So, I don't know. Any, any other thoughts about the kink community and drawing in the queers? Chill the fuck out about it. <laughs> well, and really, let's let's. I mean, let's it. feel the dreams of this shit. Let, let's yeah. be honest, you know, <laughs> in the end, does it really fucking matter? No. I mean, it's it's just not, it, who someone does or does not choose to plow, as long as it's technically legal, is unimportant. I think. I don't know I, if we wouldn't even go into technical legality because depending on where you are, I mean, there's there's some weird weird stuff about some of the stuff, some weird stuff that about we weird do in stuff. the community. Period. That are yeah borderline, well, but as long as everybody is is consensual, safe, safe, sane, and consensual. There's a there's a lot you can do within that without having to put everybody into a box. Or for all of us dark evil people, risk aware and consensual. Like. Yes, but I think in general, like, is it is it the fact that people want just more attendees, and they just they think it's just an underserved community that they can draw more people from? Right. Because I got bad news for folks. The queers have been weird motherfuckers for a long time. <laughs> They're professionals at it. They are professionals at it. And probably are not seeking out the spaces that... Don't require them. That don't require them. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, but, like, uh, I know from a business standpoint, one of the things I got told because I'm into leather work, and I've been told this repeatedly from the get, is um, if I could overly develop my heteroflexibility and go into the homosexual male department of leather work, especially homosexual male intimate wear in leather, mm -hmm. I could make a fucking fortune and retire in a few years. Mm -hmm. um, however, this is just not something that's interesting to me, but the one thing they said over and over again is that, um, yeah, the gay men have money and are willing to spend it, mm -hmm. and do not blink at the concept of spending money when they decide they want something, as opposed to pretty much everyone else in the world. Uh, so from a business standpoint, it brings in a very serious concept of money when you're talking about especially the homosexual male community. The homosexual female community apparently is considered too frugal to actually have to worry about such a thing. It's all those practical shoes. <laughs> oh, no. It sounds like a joke, but it's actually legitimately true from a business standpoint. That's also why they buy Subarus, because they last a long time. They do last yeah. a long time. No. <laughs> Gay men will buy the most flamboyant, crazy shit and not blink at the price. Hell, they'll overpay just to prove they love it. Whereas homosexual women, in standard, are really frugal and competent with their money. I'm sorry, it's not a stereotype, it's just experience. Yeah. It, it's some just stereotypes this. have uh -huh. some basis in fact. If you put your nose in my armpit again, we're not going to be friends anymore. Go yeah, if you stop. Bella, stop badgering the guests. Anyway, Liz, <laughs> do, you, do you have any thoughts on this subject? Um. Or do you want to recuse yourself? I don't really have a whole lot to say, but I mean, like, the reason I stopped going around was mostly because relationship changed, yeah, mm -hmm. more in a vanilla type place right now, so I'm fine with that, so I just go visit everybody at their houses instead of events. It's okay, that's, he's that's... a really cute hippie boy for those of you listening, so it's alright. <laughs> we approve. The Lord has approved of this. So the next thing on our list that you wanted to talk about was how fucked up the GOP is. 
Go. Oh, <laughs> Attack. Wow. All right. Well, all right. So today. Where to begin? Where to begin? And thankfully, I was very busy today in my real life, so I did not have time to write angry posts on the internet. But I read an article. <laughs> but I read something. I read something. One thing, which was an article outlining a a snapshot of the anti-Hillary paraphernalia. paraphernalia. Oh my! Available on the on the winding road to the GOP convention hall in the great poor city of Cleveland. Poor Cleveland. Poor bastards. Poor bastards. We'll cry for them later. So full of so full of Republicans right now. Um, not all the time, thankfully. Anyway, all of the horrifying buttons that and, and hats and t-shirts and shit that people have made to show their support for the apparent coming lord and savior Donald Trump. It's not a horrifying thought. That's a horrifying thought. Yeah, Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but most of these anti-Hillary buttons are are pointing out indisputable facts about how she's a woman. That she has breasts and a high voice and thighs and comparing her to a KFC bucket because breasts and thighs, isn't that original? No wings. No, it's, it's original, not, not extra crispy. Not extra crispy. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, no, uh, nothing about like the security breaches no. or her questionable emails or anything that has anything mm -hmm. to do with the actual presidential race. Right. They're just attacking the fact that She's Hillary born. is, by all apparent accounts, a woman. That is what they say. Which admittedly has never been proved in any legal official sense. I'm just Nor saying. Nor should it have to be. I, I want the sex tape. I don't want to watch it. No, I just want don't. it to be there. I, I want it to exist. Just tell yourself it exists and don't ever think about it again. I think that's probably <laughs> the easiest thing for you. But. But. I mean, that's it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's like thinking about like your, your elderly aunt. Um. No, they're all dead, so that would be necrophilia. That would be extra creepy. That would be extra creepy. Fine. Whereas Hillary's alive. And like I said, I don't want to as watch this thing. Like like many of the, the celebrity sex tapes, I don't want to watch it. I just want to know it's there. It right. makes me feel better. Yeah. So, that's, I, I mean, all right, whatever. We're the right. dais is shaking its head at me right now. Unlike the girl who played Pippi Longstocking, because that was a hot porn, damn it. Yeah. I've watched that many times, and I'll watch it many times hence. Good. Anyway. The braids do it for you? Is it the... Oh, no, no, no. Animals. It's actually like, she's, she's now just a 40-ish hot redhead oh. in lingerie who bangs hardcore. I'm like, that's awesome. Well, that could be worse. Yeah. Oh, it could be, but it won't be. But it's not. All right, it's well, I... awesome. So anyway, no, no, no. Uh, anyway so, so... disparaging women... Disparaging women in the Republican Party is, is like the party platform now. Well, yeah. Right? Right well, actually, it's always been. They're just a little more open about They're it now. They're super open about it now. We're going to totally defund Planned Parenthood. We're going to use Mike Pence as a vice presidential pick, which is horrifying because he's evil incarnate. And for those of you who don't know, let's go ahead and make this really clear right now. The reason why Republicans can get really psychotic about defunding Planned Parenthood is because of government funding going to Planned Parenthood and the fact that Planned Parenthood is also uh, makes abortions available to low-income people. These two concepts are mutually exclusive. All of the money that goes towards being able to pay for abortions actually comes from private donation. The government money only goes to free health and women's services. They're, they're actually the leader in providing free health and women's services to low-income communities. That is why it's a horrible thing to defund Planned Parenthood. It is not an attack on abortion. It becomes an attack on women and low-income families. Which the Republican Party is totally, like, apt and well willing Which they're, to do. They're, they're willing to do, and they're well aware of the, the fact that it's not actually an attack on abortion at all. Uh, the whole point is... the keeping populace isn't. Yeah, they're not aware, well, because they keep making an issue. They keep saying, well, no, it's, it's not that we want to, you know... Mm -hmm to go after women or the lower classes. We want to go after abortion because abortion is so bad and by defunding Planned Parenthood we're going to make that happen. No, you're just going to reduce all the services that would make abortion unnecessary. Like being having access to the pill, 
having access to basic health services. STD screenings? STD screen. Well, it's not even just STD screenings. They do a lot for, for health, just they, general health. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. I mean, that's, that's basically the generic free clinic for low-income uh, areas of everywhere in the world, or everywhere in our country. Yeah. Uh, but they want to defund it because why is the government paying money to help out people who don't have any? And the general public's too dumb to really do the research. Yeah, and mm -hmm. realize that, yeah, Planned Parenthood is, you know, yeah, government because money does not go to abortion. It never has. what happens when those women don't get the health care they need, then they're going to be eating, then they're going to, like, really be a burden on the rest of society when their health has completely, like, sunk into the toilet. So, and they're required to receive medical attention regardless of their ability to pay, and they're creating children that uh, society cannot afford to continue to feed. Right. Mm. So, and they can't afford to feed. Well, that's why society ends up with the problem. Yeah. So, I mean, the the it's you know the Republican Party has always been short sighted in my opinion. They you know. Well, we'll do this because it, it takes care of this problem that we want to take care of without looking at all of the like multitude of problems that by getting rid of one service that these 50 other problems are going to show up from. And but if you, can debase, if you can debase the problem, then it's someone else's fault. I mean, that's, that's the political method here. Well, right. No, nobody, nobody in government should be responsible for, for society, despite the fact that that actually is almost the exact like purpose of your job is to take care of society and create and to, govern to maintain a so society. Right. Well, is is the depending on whose definition of just you're also working off seems well, to be yes. And that's that's a whole that's a whole can of worms. It's debased from Republican or Democrat, unfortunately. But yes. not unfortunately. Fortunately, separate church and state. Holy. Um, but the GOP's platform for this election is an attack on women, attack on families, attack on homosexuals, half-assedly disguised. Well, on as the protecting on the entire right. LGBT community, it's not yeah. even just homosexuals. No. It's also transgenders, transsexuals. It's an attack on everybody. Yes. <laughs> everybody yeah. that's not white. Anybody non-normative non and non-white. Yeah. Which is really scary. Well, yeah, I mean, when you, when you actually want to defund <clears throat> clinics and, and agencies that... Help people. Help people. Uh, and, and... And not put in place any mechanism... To help, to help people differently. Everyone should just be able to scoop themselves up by their bootstraps because we haven't spent the last, oh, I don't know, 75 years in this country making every Making capitalist, sure that none of these people have boots. Yes. Making boots a capitalist commodity while we cut wages and decrease the workforce. <clears throat> Which has also led to a surplus prison population. Yeah. You mean those guys who clean the roads? Yeah. Which is free labor, basically, for them. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. No, they get paid. Not much. 18 cents an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Your tax dollars at work. Right there. Yeah, your your one dollar pays for, you know, these four people's work per hour. We should probably just mm -hmm. put everybody in prison. Oh, wait. Well, that's why I feel we like have somebody might have tried that. Somebody in not terribly distant history to try that didn't work. Who do you mean? Who could I mean? Pick one. Okay, pick one. Pick one. Anybody. We we can start. <clears throat> Fine. So the the obvious choice, right? Is Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. Hitler. Nazi Germany is easy. Hitler. Yep. And, you know, that was the Jews and the gays and the Muslims and some of the Christians, just the ones we didn't like. The and, gypsies. And the gypsies. Oh, I got, don't get started on the gypsies. I mean, that was like everybody. Yep. Right? You, you really were not, nobody was actually 
safe. Let's see. He could just say you didn't like your face. <laughs> exactly. And it wasn't it wasn't targeted. It was whole it was targeted, but whole swaths of people. It wasn't like it was one person at a time getting picked off. No, it was someone might have had someone might have had time to object then. <laughs> but that's fine. Let's build a wall. That's a great idea, guys. Let's just build a wall around our country and fence everybody in. We already have a wall, basically. Well, it's yeah, but it was built by the exact same people who rip it apart and climb over it and climb under it, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the thing is, uh, yeah, you can put up all the walls you want. These are people that, A, are the ones we're paying to put up the walls, <laughs> and B, know exactly how the walls are put together so they can get through them real fast. They actually did that on a Penn and Teller's bullshit. They hired a bunch of Mexican workers to build a section of wall exactly the way that I believe it was um, the, the governor, to governor Schwarzenegger, was talking about building a wall. And literally did the exact same specs. And it took them the better part of a day to build a 20-foot section of wall. It took them less than five minutes to get through it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and there, <laughs> there have been a number of spoofs uh, of Trump, future Trump, you know, talking about the wall that was built, and you see a bunch of Hispanic-looking individuals climbing out of a hole, like, coming coming through, and mm -hmm. just, like, walking right on behind him. Like, because it's going to make not, a difference. It's not how you manage immigration. No. If you, if you want to manage immigration, you manage it. And if you don't, you manage it bureaucratically, which is a horrifying... Bulky right. machine, but it's a hell of a lot more effective than a wall. Well, you give people an actual path to citizenship, like Ellis Island was back in the day. Exactly. Or heavens to Betsy, we we stop enforcing third world status on the countries where these people are coming from. I mean, that would be helpful too. Are we the world enforcer? Is the United States the world's enforcer? Oh, we've been the world's enforcer for quite some time. The only problem is we're not enforcing for anyone else's good. Mm -hmm. And all yeah. the other countries are sick of us right now. Mm -hmm. no, that's why we've had done a pretty good job of fucking it up. Yeah. No, that's why if you, if you talk to uh, people from any of the Middle East countries out there, they'll be like, yeah, no, um, no, we hate America. We hate you guys. Well, why? Because we, we have freedom and democracy and you don't want that? And they're like, no, we want freedom and democracy. You guys are the ones preventing us from having it. You keep supporting all these regimes that are bloodthirsty, violent, and dictatorial. And that's the reason why we can't overthrow them, because they have your support. We go to war because it's profitable for us. Mm -hmm. Not because we're doing anything good for anybody else. And then we keep people over there who don't let their own governments do what their own governments need to do, and that's fix themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, the Iraqi generals, uh, after the first the desert storm, went to General Schwarzkopf, and they, they, they didn't want help. They didn't. They, what they wanted was access to captured Iraqi arms so that they could per, uh, arm their own people and carry out a popular revolution. They were denied. Flat out denied because, as Schwarzkopf himself put it, they wanted an iron-fisted Iraqi junta to the threat of a popular revolution. Mm -hmm. We work for our own ends because we can. And yet... The, f the problems that we're facing right now are of our own doing. I mean, like... Well, of course. We're the most powerful ones out there, so any of the big problems that are out there are created by us. It's really hard for someone else to create a problem. It's much like everyone uh, blasts uh, the terrorists as being cowards for their methods. But the fact is, it's the only method we've allowed them, and we are actually the ones that have taught most of them how to do that. I mean, you know, whether they like it or not, um, Osama bin Laden was trained by the CIA. Mm -hmm. The CIA specifically trained him. In theory, it was actually to attack the Russians. But right away, uh, Osama bin Laden and all of his little buddies started carrying out their own agendas as soon as they had the training, arms, and equipment. And they made that really clear. Mm -hmm. Like we, we create so many of these problems and then we get surprised when we have problems. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Same goes on our own home turf. We we wonder why there are so many people in jail, yeah. and then we do nothing to like help them better themselves. And it's not a matter of them bettering themselves. The primary reason we have people in jail is a simple logistical fact. If you criminalize everyday actions, you turn everyday people into criminals. Well, right, but it, but uh, with the same, but on the same, you know, like plate, you you don't do anything to rehabilitate people who are in jail, and you just you just perpetuate that continuous cycle. You know, we're gonna put you in a situation where you get in trouble, and then we're gonna throw you in jail, and then we're gonna make it so that like. Everything is as stressful as possible because jail is stressful. Mm-hmm. And then, like, if you do happen to get out, you, we're going to, you know, we're Make not going to... pay for the program. Right. It's out, of their, it's out of their pocket. Right. If we have any sort of rehabilitation program, you've got to pay for it. So then when you finally do get out in the real world, not only are you trying to pay back for the rehabilitation you got in jail, but you're trying to get back to a normal life, but... One, you're not seen as a criminal, so getting a job is that much harder. Mm-hmm. If you do happen to find work, you're probably getting paid crap wages. Mm-hmm. So yeah. finding a place to live is going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, you are just, like, surmounted with all of these additional problems. And that that frustration, you know, leads you to try and, you know, mm-hmm. do whatever you can to make ends meet. And sometimes that means going down a road that you mm-hmm. didn't want to go down, but it's the only road that... Seems to be your mm-hmm. final option, and then you end up back into the system and just. Well, and some again. people literally because we don't know how to punish people other than incarcerating them, end up incarcerated for so long that they become institutionalized and don't know how to exist without the institution. They don't know yeah. how to live in normal society, and most of the people that we have currently locked up are not the the predatory, violent individuals everyone would like to think they are. No. Most of the people uh, committing felonies in prison are nonviolent drug offenses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's the better part of the the violent mm-hmm. part of the prison population is very small. Right. Mm-hmm. And Mostly, that, it's it's simple, pointless crimes that you really wouldn't care about otherwise. Right. And and if they were addicts mm-hmm. themselves, you're 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 forcing them to get sober and that's a huge process and undertaking in and of itself and then as you said they are so used to the institutionalized day-to-day routine somebody tells them when to get up when to eat when to shit you know when to do their laundry when to go to bed you know and and if they don't have that when they get back out into society like they don't have that regimen they don't have that routine and they don't know where to begin, you know, unless, I don't know, unless they go into something like the military or someplace where, you know, they have more of that. You can't unless, can you? Well, yeah, that's the only problem is if you were a felon, you generally can't enlist. You can't, yeah, you can't enlist, you can't own a gun, and you can't vote for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Depending on the right. offense. Depending on the crime. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so they go from this very strict... Routine to try and have to figure it out on themselves on their own, and I mean, hell, anybody who's ADD can tell you that if they don't have a routine, like <coughs> shit hits the fan real quick. And then you're asking these people who, you know, have been forced into an institution that gives them this routine, and then you just when they finally get out, they're free on the world, but they have no idea how to maintain that, you know. Daily balance. Nor do most prisons actually create any sort of safe structure. Well, no. I mean, other than just being yelled at when you get up, when you eat, when you shit, when you go to bed. Like, it's not... not, Well, first off, there's just no safety, period. Safety goes right out the window the second you go in. Nobody cares what happens to you. Exactly. Right. But the other thing to consider on that one, though, is also the speed at which technology is advancing. Like, can you imagine someone getting out of prison today that went into prison 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah no. Unemployable. Yeah. Uh, completely unemployable, no applicable skills, no understanding on how to use something so simple to each of us as an ATM mm-hmm. or the internet. They wouldn't have no concept of these things. Would be completely lost in our world. Would have no idea how to do it. Imagine finding yourself thrown 20 years into the future right now. Yeah. You'd be completely lost. 
And if you don't go in with a support network to that world, you're destroyed. There's nothing you can do but reoffend and go back into a system that at least you're familiar with. At least it's a life you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's that's a very real reality. Mm-hmm. I ride the bus in the wintertime frequently, and I've heard more than once heard people sit on the bus and talk about you know, committing a minor offense so that they can go to county lockup when it's cold. Yeah. Because at least there's three meals. And it's warm, and you get a blanket. Three hots and a cot. Mm-hmm. You get that. Yeah. yeah, I was reading a story about a guy who literally does that every now and again, just go to a fancy restaurant, order himself a nice big meal, and then inform them he cannot pay, at which point they will call the police, he will be arrested, and spend time in jail. So he gets a really nice meal, followed by free meals and a place to sleep. Because mm-hmm. he's homeless and he has no other options. Right, and instead of and instead of the government trying to work to create better situations, they'd rather spend more time fighting and bitching and bickering over taking away other services. We should probably just keep making it a criminal offense to be a woman. It's, it's just right, it. I mean, like, you That's know... It's working really well. So. A criminal offense and a criminal responsibility. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you're a woman, take care of all your own problems. Yeah, we'll just completely hand... And your mans, too. And, yeah. and God help you if you're a woman of color, because then you're just double screwed. Well, you're, yeah. You might as well just quit now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Platform. Speaking of which, Trump wants to take away all of the cisgendered and LGBTQ uh, rights as fast as he can. Oh, yeah. All the rights. Mm-hmm. Everybody's rights all the time. Everybody. Like, all the LGBTQ rights that they've that have been fought for and scraped out and finally have gotten some of, he wants to just take them all away. I'm curious what they're going to do to Obamacare, because without that, I'm screwed. Because before pre-existing conditions, I couldn't get insurance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, and, I, and no one's mentioned it yet. I've been asking, no one has, a, like, no it's one not, has an answer for me. It's too early in the political campaign. Yeah. No one's going to admit that they're, you know, they, they screamed and yelled about it and they lost. Obamacare became law. Yeah, and then it actually almost sort of kind of is starting to work now. It's, it's actually had some time to get off the ground. You don't hear quite so many stories about really, really screwed up marketplace problems. Uh, mm. There's some in Illinois, but it's not, it's very localized. Like, right. And they're hospitals. working on it. Yeah. Like, it's not like it w- before when it was just like, nothing works. Yep. Now it's just like, yeah, there, there's still some problems. We're still working I mean, on it, but, you know, I'm for locked, the most part, now it's working. I'm locked out of the website, but I could still go anywhere and just buy my own insurance from mm-hmm. whatever company I want mm-hmm. right? without the marketplace. Right. So. Sorry I'll for the side that. tangent there. That's no, good. but it's, it's, you it's, know, it's true. It is one of the relevant points that is going to possibly, probably get ripped apart. You know, it really doesn't matter who takes office at that point. They're probably going to rip Obamacare down, which is stupid, but they'll do it. Because there's money in it. Mm. That was one of the things. When Obama did it, there was no money in it. That was the whole thing. That was the whole reason why everyone opposed it, was because it meant that a whole lot of uh, rich friends were losing money. Because all of a sudden, they couldn't deny health care. They couldn't jack up prices for health care. It actually became a lot more of a reasonable thing. Well, and honestly, I mean, like, the Republican Party just wants to privatize everything because... More money. It's more money. Yeah. And they know that when they privatize everything, the companies that are going to be the ones that are contracted to do everything are all the companies they and their friends own. So, of course, they're like, yes, yes, what we must do is privatize. And to them, it's perfectly reasonable because, after all, they'll make money and we're the untermensch, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, here's an idea. My health insurance now is about five grand a year. Uh-huh. Before, my, my family was paying close to 12000 Mm-hmm. Just for me. Yeah. When I did have insurance before the Hearst program for the state of Wisconsin came into effect. Yeah. But even then, it was more than the five grand based on what you make. Yeah. For your your monthly health care payments. <clears throat> Needs to be income-based health care costs. Yeah, how about just a, a, a refit of the whole system yeah. and taking a, almost all the profit out of it? Let's yeah. just have nonprofits run it. 
That way it's like, good. It's Nobody can Canada. make money and you actually have to care about people to do it. Become Canada or England. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But nobody seems to want that because socialism is evil. Man, the one the thing that they do have... For a bit. Yeah. The one thing that, ha that they did bring up that is a reasonable point under the circumstances is that uh, America has the best healthcare system available, yeah. the best healthcare people available, and it's because it. we have uh, the, the financial yeah. system set up, uh, whereas all the rest of them are falling behind really because they can't afford to pay doctors a crap ton of money. Mm -hmm. But and my thought still is... still end up dead. Yeah. Well, but I, my thought is that uh, if nobody is offering healthcare people a crap ton of money to do their job, they're just offering them a decent salary to do their job, then in theory there should be a balance of healthcare individuals throughout the world available. Do we want to talk about universal wage next? <laughs> well, I mean... Well, no, I'm serious. That actually... No. We, we it's should. not a bad point. No, you know, we, universal wage is a, is a colorful point that needs to be brought up as well. Like our our base minimum wage is right now horrible. Is not livable. No, it's not. There's I don't know how they can have the minimum wage and think that that is a livable wage. It's not. No. Like I I am well above minimum wage and and I still know where every single one of our pennies goes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like I I still and don't there have enough. There are a lot of extra pennies. No, I, I, I don't have enough. I, I'd like to have more because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have no security net right now. Mm -hmm. If I was to get injured or lose my job, I have no backup, no savings, no nothing. Uh, I'm too busy running around paying bills like a madman. Mm -hmm. And I make well above minimum wage. The very mm -hmm. thought that someone on minimum wage could have any kind of life is ridiculous. It needs to be raised. There's no reason not to raise it. Except that it saves companies money. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, and the first attitude is that, that you hear is, well, minimum wage jobs aren't supposed to be sustaining jobs. They're supposed to be you know, workforce introduction jobs. Yeah, except for you, except you get nowhere. Home. You've got right. nowhere to go. There, well, there and the thing is, no is like, if you're talking about a small percentage of these jobs being minimum wage, that's fantastic. But the greater percentage of these jobs that are available right now are minimum wage jobs. So it's obviously considered a normal standard of living, not the introduction standard of living. Mm -hmm. And when you see degree-requiring degree jobs that want to pay $12 an hour full-time, those aren't really, you know, 20... Those aren't sustainable those, either. Those not when you have the, the bills. Jobs. No. You, you, can't, you cannot pay back the bills you have from earning a degree on that amount of money. Right. Yeah. First of all, I mean, think about it. If you had to take out a loan for that degree. Yeah. And then just having, just even basic, basic bills. I mean, like, the minimalist. Rent, food, clothing, food, power, transportation. Maybe health care. Maybe health care. Like, you ought to be able to have health care. Right. No, remember, five basic... Five because basic, of Obamacare, health care is now required. Otherwise, you get fined fine. out of your mind when you file your taxes. Yeah. So, right. no, health care is now a required thing. Which I right. disagree with because that's also kind of... Well, yeah. Because if you can't afford to have health care in the first place, <laughs> and then and then you get fined more than that... Yeah, yeah, there's the, that. It's like when you overdraft an account at the bank and they charge you more of what they know you don't have for yeah. not having it in the first place. Right. Yeah. Your logic is failing. It's... Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, just as a, like, a single person with health insurance so that they can actually see a doctor, someplace for shelter, food, clothing, and transportation. Five basic needs that we pretty much all have to deal with. Just those bills alone. And then you're getting paid this crap wage and you have to try and pay back your student loans on top of your five basic needs. Mm -hmm. It's not enough money. But it's but not you're enough gonna, money. You're, you're, you're going to be the, working a second job, possibly a third. But you're going to climb the ladder. You're going to... Yeah, and that's what you're told. That's, that's what, what you're told, told is that so this job is going to... climb the ladder. Right. And then... Maybe. Well, and that's presuming unless, you climb the ladder in the first place. Right. right. Or, or the industry shuts down and everybody says... Yeah, it's cool. We're not going to lay anybody off. We're also gonna, we're also going to do a blanket wage freeze. Mm -hmm. Thanks, two thousand eight to two thousand 
Yeah. Mm. What year is it? 16. 16. Or, or even 2002. That's... Some of us may be drinking. Um, Some of us. I don't know. I, but, but... I was in a temp position where the company was not going to hire because they had wage freezes, and they'd had wage freezes for over a year at that point. Mm -hmm. So that's why they were hiring temps. You don't have to pay temps anything. You certainly don't have to pay benefits. Well, and that's one of the uh, highest grossing companies right now Our temp is agencies. Manpower Incorporated and other temporary agencies because we got so many temps. Mm -hmm. Because at least it's some money. And it's much like people that work for Walmart. They know they're not going to get paid anything. But the tiny ass little bit that they get paid is better than nothing. Hey, they hey, weigh, that's better than seven twenty five. They raise all Walmart's at ten bucks an hour now, but you're getting less hours. Uh -huh. Yep. Well, I mean, when I worked for Walmart, it was. I mean, it I, was like I still got. I think I got eight bucks an hour. Yeah. Um, but I was told very explicitly that I would never get more than my twenty two hours a week because if I started getting more like 26 hours a week and I did so for at least six months then they were forced to offer me a very very basic sort of health care mm -hmm. and so I was you know like repeatedly maybe like given 25 hours a week so I was always under that 26 yep. hours I was always under and and so it was just like dangling the carrot in front of your except face except during holidays when they actually needed the help Right, but then they'd like cut you as soon as the holiday rush was over. Then you'd work like ten hours a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean, companies find ways to, you know. Well, it's all a system to game. Well, yeah. I mean, that's all. The whole world's just a system to game. If you want to be a real cynic about it. Yeah. Which I am. <laughs> yeah, and I. Nothing I love better than a cynical hedonist. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> That's why I took over my family business. I don't want to be stuck in the retail. Mm -hmm. Just stuck at this stage that all my age group seems to be in. They're still living at home. They're all like on two to three part-time jobs, trying to pay off a degree. Mm -hmm. Kids, if they have them. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone... I'm making the rash assumption, assumption that we're fairly close in age. Everyone our age was told to go get a degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, it, if you were going to be anything, you certainly were going to work. I mean, that's been true for a long time. Even, even if it was a liberal arts degree, you still had a degree. Yeah. You were told to get one. Well, yeah, and that, and that was the great lie, right? Yeah. It was encouraging folks to not get degrees that were useful. Um, I have a degree in a STEM field and work in my field and always have, um, and we're not rolling in dough, but we certainly, we certainly pay all our bills, and... We're also not, yeah, we're not living in a tiny shack either. Accurate. I mean, it's not a very big place, but it's... Well, no, it's but for the two of you, it's a decent studio. size. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a um, nice-sized place. It is. And Unlike some of us who accidentally live in a ridiculously large house that's really designed for about three more people than live here. But it gives me extra room to have a laboratory, a studio, and a shop. So, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. This opportunity was presented, and we took it. Gosh darn it. My family insisted I go get a degree. They didn't care what it was, and they pushed me into college. They didn't have anything I was really interested in, which is why I ended up with a little arts degree. Mm -hmm. That I'm paying off. Mm -hmm. so. yep. And then I'm Same thinking here. about doing a short course at Madison later. Once the other one's paid off. Well, the one I always loved was, uh, yeah, when I went to college, I studied philosophy. And when I got out of college, I was immediately hired at a philosophy factory where we had no product, but we knew why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I don't understand. Like, I've worked with people that are going for these degrees in philosophy. I'm like, do you plan on being a professor? Because that's about it. That's Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all you got. I mean, that's, well, I mean unless... Other than that, you're going to be able to really really in-depth explain to the people at social services why you don't have money. Uh, <laughs> like, you can discuss it on levels at that point, but that's about it. Unless, unless unless they create a whole, like, job just called Think Tank and Philosophy Tank. Which they don't. Which they don't. So... I mean, that's the thing. Philosophy is a great addendum to other things. Like, I love studying philosophy, 
but there are way, way, way too many courses available free on YouTube for me to want to go out and pay money to have a degree in something no one will pay me to do. Right. I might as well have a degree in medieval medicine. Well, and then... And I know the problem. We will solve it with leeches. Leeches fix a lot. We'll amputate. Leeches. We'll amputate and then add leeches. I was really interested in geology, but then when I got down to it, it's like, well, you have to live where volcanoes and earthquakes are, or you become a professor. And it's like, but you get to play with dirt and rocks. Yes. Yes. Dirt. Which is mm-hmm. why I decided not to go that route. I still had to go through a useless degree, but, you know. But it's important that you pick the right useless degree. You know, the kind of useless degree you're going to have fun with in your yeah. life. Like well, a, you know, the whole, the whole like, selling point for liberal arts is that you'll have a well-rounded education so that you can you know, insert know. yourself into society and be able to have meaningful conversations about politics and art and science and be able to I can to do, do all math. that. I'm poor oh. as fuck. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, you know, you, you, you'd be able to get your foot at least somewhere in the door and then you could decide, you know, your big grand plan from there. Like... Which, unless you plan on being a megalomaniac and taking over the world, and unless you have the resources to make that actually happen, is more or less useless. Yeah. Shoot. Trump got a liberal arts degree? Huh? Trump's got a liberal arts degree? <laughs> yeah. Basically, unless you want From to be a megalomaniac university. and take over the world <laughs> and have the resources to do it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> I gather what you're describing. You, you see how this works now. I see how this works now. <laughs> you see. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you for proving my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's, I mean, but that was the whole thing. Is like, you know, a liberal arts degree is so simple and it'll be so easy and you'll be, you it's know, well, a well rounded individual. And then How you that, can decide. You from a high school degree, high school diploma. <laughs> that thing that was the thing that everyone is supposed to get in this country at 18. I swear you to God, what? she's smart as a whip. It just doesn't come out when she's drinking. It's just the next level it, of being well-rounded. It just it says you have a paper, which Ugh. comes to another point. Back in 2008, when we hit the recession, I was just out of high school trying to find work. I had a McDonald's interview, and the manager there said I didn't have enough work experience to work for his store. And <laughs> I was going... Isn't that the, the whole point of McDonald's? McDonald's is your stepping stone I, to I, get I laughed experience. at him. It's, the thing is, GM, the GM plant... Went under that year. Yep. And he was sympathetic to the GM workers over anyone else coming into his store. Well, and at least that so, is reasonable. But, like, yeah, when it you're sucked. like, no, like, I'd, I'd love to hire you, him. but these people really need a job. They have families to support. You're just a kid. And you're it would have been better if he would have said that to me instead of saying, oh, you don't have enough work experience for me. I'm like, you're fucking McDonald's. Well, <laughs> no one's really fucking McDonald's, but. McDonald's is really kind of fucking. Yeah. 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 But, uh, no, well, but, you know, in a way, it is actually a way of saying the same thing when they're like, well, yeah. it, we have this entire pool of people who want to work here, all of whom have massive amounts of work experience and you have none. Yeah. They're going to lean towards that. They're going to lean towards the people that have the work experience. Which is somewhat ironic given the fact that most people equate McDonald's with, you know, people who don't give a shit and are willing to take low pay for the work that they do. And if you have all these people with work experience, they're going to come in and say, I just got, you know, kicked out of a, you know, you know, six figure job and you're going to pay me this crap. No, you got to pay me more than that. And they're going to be like, yes, yeah, sorry. No, we can't. We're going to hire that high schooler for minimum wage. Well, but remember, in, even in your situation, when you're talking about someone who was at a high paying job with good benefits and the whole bit. And then next thing you know, they suddenly find themselves without a job, without income, without anything. Yeah. At that point, you get desperate. Yeah, and at that true. point, you're like, I have a family. I don't care how much abuse I take. I have to keep this job until I can get a better one. I got to at least bring in something to pay the bills. Yeah. But like, uh, the sad thing is when you're talking about like degrees, I, I have a doctorate in metaphysics. I got it from the Universal Life Church. It cost me $20. And it probably is about as worthwhile and about as meaningful as the average degree is right now. Yep. <laughs> so yes. that's why, like, I'm I believe in education. I love education. I support education. I love the fact that Gresham College, as well as uh, like Harvard and other well-known universities, 
put their lectures online so that you can learn pretty much anything you want to, college lecture style, for free. Yeah. All you lose is the piece of paper saying that you know this shit. Yeah, right. Like, I love the fact that I can learn and I don't have to pay for it. But that's the sad point. Like, you have, they they want you to somehow prove that you've gotten Mm -hmm. that piece of paper to work jobs like answering the telephone and sorting mail these days. Mm -hmm. Like, they want you to have an associate's in business management because they assume that, well, if you're going to take a job answering phones and sorting mail, one day you're going to try and run run a business. It's like, you know, some people are just going to answer the phones and sort your mail. Yeah. Like, I got a job like that straight out of high school. Didn't, it was a, it was called an entry level position for a reason. Yeah, it's like this is where you begin. Right, you don't have to go to a two year college getting associates in business and and management planning or whatever to answer phones say hi blah 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 company how may I help you today? But you have the same problem as with Liz's example because you come from a generation where well hell I'm older than y'all I come from a generation where we were told we're the same age Bella. barely. Kids, but um, <laughs> I make you young, dear. <laughs> yes, you do, but that's another story. But uh, you know, all got told like you have to have a degree, your world will end. I mean, even if with a degree, you might get a job at McDonald's, blah blah blah. So, you've got everyone in a second cousin who has a degree. If you have this entire pool of people with degrees and one person without, who are you gonna hire for the business position, no matter how stupid it is? Mm-hmm. Even if it is answering phone and sorting mail, you might as well go with the overqualified person so that you can move them up. Well, I've yeah, had friends definitely. complaining about being, like, they've gotten turned off for being overqualified for jobs, too. Mm-hmm. So it goes both ways. Well, the problem with overqualification is that, in theory, they have to pay more for it. Mm-hmm. And that can be a slippery slope. Because you end up paying more because someone's overqualified, and then they actually get into the job, and you realize that sometimes they're way underqualified. Trust me, I work in a kitchen. I deal with this all the time. There's so many people that walk in like, I am the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And then you get them in the kitchen and say, boil an egg. And they say, how? Mm-hmm. With water. Really fascinating. And you're just like, go away. But you've already hired them. So now you have to go through the long, difficult process of firing them. Mm-hmm. Which is why I love the fact that I currently work for an at-will company and just be like, you're fired. Why? Because. Mm-hmm. Like, they, I don't think they mention it any less than 12 times in the orientation that it was an at-will company and they could fire us at any time. Mm-hmm. Which is wonderful because the company absolutely does not do that. They just reserve the right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's fantastic. Well, that's because the entire state of Wisconsin is, is at-will. Mm-hmm. Covered. Yeah. So. Yep. Which isn't always a bad thing as long as no. you have a company that's being responsible about it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, like, like I said, the company I work for, um, which I'm not going to mention because I don't have their permission to mention them, but extremely responsible about it. Like, I've seen them hold on to people where I'm like, you're an at-will company, fire him. You know he's useless, fire him. Mm-hmm. And they like to keep people on and try to frustrate them into quitting, I guess, is the only thing I can figure. Mm-hmm. Or just wait to see if they get better. But some of them, you just kind of look at them and you're like, That's you look not- in their eyes, yeah. There's, there's no hope. There's none. There's not even a. There's not even a light on. You're full. Of no one's the, home. The, the, the wheel is turning, on. but the hamster is dead. Yeah. The lights are on, but the car has exploded. You know. <laughs> he's not talking about it's, you. It's it's so not well. Talking. Maybe he's talking about you. <laughs> but still, it's like, you know, they're they're a responsible company about it then because then they don't use it. You know, there's to me the I've oh, always been a person that has a massive amount of authority with everything I do. But the trick with the mass amount of authority is not to use it. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as you're doing everything you can to, like, I, when I was in the military, that was the one thing, like, I went off at an underlay. Not because he made a mistake, not because he screwed up, but because it made me actually have to use authority, official authority, to correct him. I'm like, I have to write you up. That pisses me off more than the fact that you fucked up. I could live with the fact that you fucked up, but now you're actually making me use my official position in an official way. I hate that shit. Ah! Like, literally, went off at him more because he made me actually use my position than that he fucked up in the first place. Mm -hmm. And seriously, uh, given the fact that it's not giving away any sort of military secrets, I can tell you what the motherfucker did. He put popcorn in the microwave turned it on, and then walked away. And turns out, it was set for like 10 minutes, almost lit the place on fire. 
I watch college kids do that. The entire <laughs> station smelled like burnt popcorn for two weeks after that. Mm-hmm. And they're looking at me like, you have to write him up. I'm like, why? What the fuck did I do? And they're like, you're you. I'm like, shit, you're right. God damn it. Mm-hmm. And literally, not only did I write this motherfucker up, not only did I go after him because he made me write him up. Like, why are you... I, I love the fact that I have a more or less unofficial position. That I just... I, I work here. I make food. You know, eat the food. I go home. I don't want to have to use my official authority if I can possibly get away with it. And made me do it. But on top of that, I actually got kudos from the, the entire command structure when I, when I filed that. Because... They were actually blown away by the fact that I wrote him up for fucking up a microwave with a bag of popcorn and made it sound serious. They're like, Yo, I can't believe how like serious and drastic that sounded. Like he screwed up last week. I, I I had to yell at him and write him up because we told him to get a haircut and he didn't. And I didn't know how to write that up. And he, I told him to get a haircut and he did not. And like you wrote. Three paragraphs <laughs> made him seem like the pariah of the station because he fucked up a bag of popcorn in a microwave. And I'm like, you have no idea how hard I worked to make that not sound stupid. Because mm-hmm. I had to sign my fucking name on that thing. And I didn't want to be like, he fucked up a microwave with popcorn. <laughs> you know, so I actually really made it sound serious and brought up, you know, the logistical possibility of him burning the entire station down and, you know, threat to the community and risk factors as far as our ability to respond to any necessities the community may have from local military force. <laughs> so, like, literally, I just, mm-hmm. yeah, three paragraphs of just, like, you almost brought down the entire military because of your popcorn fiasco. <laughs> so... I, I actually got kudos for that, but I'm like, that's one thing, like, do not make me use official authority. I know I have it, just don't make me use it. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, you know I have it, I know I have it, just assume that I have it, agree with what I say, go on, do your job right, and then there's no problem. You do your job, I do my job, I have authority, nobody cares, we move on with our day. That's mm-hmm. kind of the way I like to be. That's usually the reason why people keep giving me authority. It's because they know that I don't want it. And you don't abuse it. Uh-huh. It's much like paperwork. I always get stuck with paperwork because I'm really good at it, but I hate it passionately. But I realize the necessity for it and how important it is because I've run so many kitchens in my life that I'm like, I know if it's not, if everything is not spot on within the penny accurate, Mm -hmm. the world will end. Yep. And it's a fucking nightmare. So I'm always really careful with my paperwork, even though I hate it. And I will find whatever way I can to screw with it in a way that won't actually affect the numbers. But will confuse the shit out of the people who actually have to read it after me. <laughs> like, there there was one place I worked where literally I did all of the paperwork in Old English calligraphy. <laughs> now, I didn't actually write it in Old English. I wrote it in Modern English. I just used calligraphy. Which is very ornate and often difficult to read in... Yeah, I got I got yelled at a few times because they're like, uh, "Yeah, you're you're the kitchen manager, not a monk. This is an inventory sheet, not the book of Kells. Please use a regular pen." And I said, "No problem," because they never specified a regular pen for what century, and continued to use calligraphy to do all my paperwork. <laughs> Because they also didn't tell you to not use calligraphy. They just yep, said to use a regular pen. Right. Yeah. Okay. I will literally do what you told me. See, that, and that's one of the reasons why like, I'm, I'm good at paperwork, because I understand what it means, but at the same time, you don't necessarily want me doing it, because I will have fun, because otherwise, I'm going to kill myself. Mm-hmm. So. I don't want that. Well, maybe. No. All right, so we're like an hour and 15 minutes in live. Do we want to just cut the show here? Yes. All right. We're cutting the show here. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we will catch you all on the flip side.